brain served me correctly, our next speaker is Ted Watson. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to appear here. We can't really see you, Ted. You're in the dark there. The lights up. <laughs> I'll start the timer when the light is. <laughs> I'm very honored to appear to have a chance to talk to this distinguished group of investment bankers. And I know how you must feel after the dot com crash. <laughs> the ones who made who made out well are not here today. <laughs> and of course, the ones who lost everything aren't either. <laughs> so you will be a group of the astute, the far-seeing, who are able to understand the concepts I want to put before you. <coughs> a lot of talk, there was a lot of tall talk in the late 90s as the words got bigger and bigger. <laughs> you heard all these wonderful tools that were going to help people understand computers. So we had talking paper clips. <laughs> For those to whom the World Wide Web was too complicated, we had the Bonzi Buddy, a gorilla, a purple gorilla who would help you through and stay on your browser. And we have the wonderful website AskJeeves.com, which got, I believe, 10 million in uh, first stage capital. Jeeves says, as you go to the front page, ask me anything. I know everything. He said, what is the population of Bulgaria? I know this about Bulgaria. <laughs> Bulgaria is a country. <laughs> and then a little list distract you from the fact that they paid no attention to your question. <laughs> so we have seen we've seen simultaneously the dumb down of concepts being offered to consumers and the escalation of idiocy in the concepts being presented to the likes of you. So let's cut through this. We have a computer world now which has become a nightmare honky-tonk prison where fanfares and, and pretty flashing lights distract you from the fact that everything is progressively more complicated and you're being spied on on every side and nothing is available anymore and you have to sign up for everything. I say, let's start over. <laughs> let's start over, let's clean the slate. Are you users of Windows? How are you doing on your backups? <laughs> <laughs> Have you had the machine halt in the middle of backups by any chance? <laughs> Have you lost any data? Have things disappeared into strange parts of your uh, disk? And have you, have you had to reinstall the operating system and lose track of all your settings? Or are you a user of the Macintosh? Once so simple and unreliable. <laughs> <laughs> no, rock solid and incomprehensible. <laughs> so the beginning user puts something on the desktop. OK, now I'll file it inside old and gets the full Unix directory. <laughs> Right. How about Linux? Oh, that's great. We have this wonderful command line interface, or we have the, the um, uh, GNOME thing with really nice, incomprehensible widgets that were designed as a dumbdown of the command line interface as distinct from uh, clarity. Everything is designed either for people who need to know too much, or for an imaginary stupid person. <laughs> so many people want to design for the man in the street. Well, the man in the street is lying on his back with a bottle of uh, wild Irish rope. <laughs> <laughs> we need things designed for the intelligent but clueless beginner. And shall we say, the power beginner. 
<laughs> we want to create a new computer world where things are no harder than they need to be, and that's so difficult. Because the issue was never electronics, and was never the innards of complex operating systems. The issue was always, how long have we got? About two minutes. The issue was always <laughs> the design of imaginary constructs. You see, <clears throat> science is supposed to be about universals. And yet computer science, I believe, has become sidetracked into the ramifications of tradition. Because it's all about computer languages which are written as long strings. So <clears throat> you write a program as a long string, and then you do a string match against the various variables and the, and the opcodes and so on. And that then compiles an executable. So people go all off into the, the uh, consequences of string parsing and syntax. But the real issue is the complex executable and making it understandable, because computer languages are about the human mind's grasp of the task to be done and maintaining it through iterations as you improve the program. OK, so the design, so computer science has always been, I believe, about the design of imaginary constructs and their ramifications. But everybody thinks it's about reality, and that's the mistake. It's much more like game design. So the game I am presenting to you, the package, let us say, the zigzag virtual machine, virtual interactive machine, will be a cross-platform new user system. The power beginner can look at all the cells and orthogonal connections. The uh, relaxed beginner can merely use the functions add relative, add appointment, delete appointment, change appointment, and making these and adding these within the language of the system so it is a unified package. You do not have to walk outside it. And it will be the same running under Linux and running under the Macintosh and running under Windows. By eschewing the temptations of each of these environments, and rather creating a hermetically clean <laughs> internal world, we can start over. So I offer to you a simple new beginning, a fresh start, a sunny morning <laughs> after the hungover nightmare we have built today. <laughs>